I'm Jody. Hi. This is Jennifer. Hi. And we were uh, we were doing a Facebook Live and we had some connectivity issues, so we are back now. So for those of you who didn't see the beginning, um, this is Jennifer. She's an interior designer and entrepreneur. It's good to see you. Thank you for welcoming me into your home. And so we did a Facebook Live takeover back in July, mm -hmm. and that was amazing. You're, Thank you. Yeah, we got a lot of great fan tips and, um, and questions and tips and everything that you were able to give everyone, so we're back here to give some more. So. Which I love, having your comments and your questions, and we drove a lot of the content today based on the questions that you've been asking which makes it really fun. But keep the questions coming today because I'm gonna be able to continue to answer those questions. And we're going to be talking about how to warm up your home interiors for fall without breaking the bank and also doing some of the typical things you'd think of with maybe a unique spin. And then we're gonna transition, and this is all right now at the 10 o'clock hour, we're gonna transition and talk about readying your home for the unexpected and the expected guests during the holiday time because we all have them. And no matter what, no matter how much we love our guests, it's challenging and it's tiring. <laughs> so we're going to show you how to take some of that stress out of it. Um, and then, at the, and then uh, most importantly, giveaways. Yes. We've got a lot of good giveaways. Mattresses and sheet sets and robes, I think, too. Yes. And then at the 11 o'clock hour, we're going to transition and talk about tabletop decor. And we're going to do a Thanksgiving or actually a fall table setting that's kind of an easy breezy Southern California style. So it's not overly fussy. It's something anyone can pull off. In fact, you can get anything for or this table right at your grocery store. And some of these items are even carried at your local Costco. And then we're going to talk about a special way to greet your guests during the holiday season. So all of that's coming up. Wonderful, I'm really excited. We'll go ahead and get started right now transitioning your living spaces okay, to, great. I'm gonna clear the board. This is Jax, I think they've settled in. It's so all we, over, it's all over. Jax, Jax. Yes. Jax. So we're gonna be transitioning their sofa for the fall. So you'll notice my room is still set up like you saw it the last time, set for spring and um, summer. I'm personally not a fan of a lot of oranges and golds and burgundies for fall just because everyone has them. So I always am trying to find a unique way to warm up for the fall that can keep me through transitioning sorry, Oliver, through, <laughs> through the season. So I'm getting rid of all the light color pillows. When the, a good rule of thumb when you're transitioning your pillows, pay attention to the, to the texture of your sofa. If you've got a really textural sofa like this, you'll want to use, contrast it with something soft like a velvet or a leather, but not anything too nutty because I'm going to show you what happens here. When you take this green tone pillow and look at that contrast, the really heavy contrast against a heavy texture, that doesn't work as well. But watch when you flip this over, the exact same color, and that's so much prettier on a sofa. So I am choosing emerald greens for this fall season, and I'll show you how to transition this in and just warm up the whole room. I'm gonna take one more charcoal, so I'm grounding it with a really dark, <laughs> oh my gosh. Of course the boys won't leave. <laughs> they wanna be the stars of the segment. <laughs> Before the end of the segment, you'll see the when we do the full reveal, they will be gone. So I lay anchoring the corners. When you're doing your pillows, it's good to vary the heights and the sizes. So if, for example, if I had all 22 by 22, it wouldn't be as interesting. But when I contrast it with a 20 by 20, then that really works. So then I want to keep this feeling of my overall home intact because I don't want it to be a complete disconnect. So I'm still going to bring one of my other pillows and put that right in the center and that just warms up that space. And then I ribbon the color around the room. And ribboning means you take your accent color and you wanna represent it at least three times in your room. So just loading up the sofa is not enough. You have to bring it around to other areas of the room. So I'm gonna bring in the green to the chair and then to transition to the fireplace area, all I'm gonna do is take a throw, because I don't wanna buy a ton of pillows, and just toss a throw right over the corner of the chair. When you're um, selecting your throws for fall, the darker warm tones really work well. This isn't the time for like the pinks and the lavenders and light blues and things like that, but just something casually draped that you don't do, don't make it too fussy, that's for sure, just keep it simple. Now I'm gonna have you look around the room. We've got Brie here, you guys met Brie the last time. She's gonna help me with the rest of this because I'm gonna move some heavy objects. This still doesn't look right. It doesn't look proportioned. It looks a little bit 
haphazard, like I still have too much of the spring and summer. So what's missing here, and this will help you as you're assessing your room, we're missing that whole middle zone. This still looks like spring where the outside layer looks like fall. So watch what happens when I take away these light tones. I have to move my crystal, which is pretty heavy. That's a beautiful crystal too. Thank you, I love it. But the color tone's not right. My hot pink definitely has to go when it's coming to fall. And the other thing I'm gonna point out, this plant, I love it, but all the leaves are very light toned. And I'm gonna show you just what changing out that plant does to the room. So we've got, I'm gonna change out the color of the book. So books, your know, books are fun to read, but they're also great decorating pieces. But make sure you use the books for decorating with colors that purposely help your room because the books can make or break the look and you'll see in just a second. And bringing in this plant, look at the difference when I bring in a dark leaf plant for fall and it just brings that green color right through the center. Now the coffee table still feels a little flat, so bringing in just a metallic object, brass, is really good for fall tones. Not that you can't mix your metals, you absolutely can, but watch just a pop of interest and that helps that because your accessory items are always better in uneven numbers. So if you have two books, put a small object and turn it into three and it pulls it together. So now we're gonna go back to the fireplace. I'm gonna show you another little switch. But why, right now, I've got a plant that has more of a spring color against ferns. I love ferns, but watch the difference when I transition to a warm tone pot. Thank you, Jody, for grabbing that yeah, for me. No so I bring in the brass and then just some eucalyptus leaves, some lemon leaves, really anything that you pick from your yard or from the street or your neighbor's yard, <laughs> you might want to ask permission. But there's a huge difference, and I'm going to let you pan the room, but then also transitioning the coasters. These are all simple, not overly costly items, but it really makes a big difference. So you want a ribbon, I'll get out of your space so you can do a little pan, but you'll want to ribbon these colors along the outside of the room, but then you also want to bring them right into the center of the room and make sure they go all the way around. So Jody's over here on this chair, but we've brought over to this side of the room, we've got this nice throw, and then we brought in the copper tone and the brass tone to the other side of the room. We've used dark leaves on the plants, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of texture. <laughs> if you happen to have labradoodles, they blend <laughs> right in. Thank goodness they're fall tones. <laughs> So there's a few more ways to warm up your space for fall, and they are things that you might not typically think about. So let's come over here, and we're gonna show you. Your light bulbs actually matter, and they make a big difference when you're transitioning your look. So for spring and summer, I have light bulbs that are more of a white tone. So a little bit more cool and a little more bright. And then when it's fall, I do a warmer bulb. Look at the difference that makes and just warming up the whole space. And at nighttime, you'll notice that makes a really big difference. And I don't care what brand of light bulb you get, that to me, that's not important. But the thing that is important is to make sure when you get a light bulb, look at the label and look for either a white, a true white light bulb, or a soft white, or something that even says it's a warm white, because the light bulbs matter. And make sure you don't have one white bulb and one yellow bulb. I see that often, and sometimes I'll walk into my room and realize, oh, I forgot to change out the light bulbs. Make sure your light bulbs match, because that is a big difference. All right, so the other thing to pay attention to in fall, in setting the tone for your family, and setting the tone for your guests, are all your other senses matter. Smell is a big one and that gives a really big cue right when someone walks into your home the fragrance they have you can buy candles and that's completely fine but if you want to go just a little bit more natural a crock pot filled with water that you just keep on low or keep on warm with orange slices it smells so good and then cinnamon sticks and you just put it right in the water and then sprinkle some clothes 
And again, if you have all these ingredients, great. If you don't have them, <laughs> you're fine to just put oranges in here or cinnamon sticks on its own and bay leaves. But this recipe really makes a, an amazing aroma. And you can just keep, you don't have to change this out frequently. I wouldn't recommend drinking it, but having that um, smell and the aroma right when you walk into your home, it really sets the intention for the feeling of fall. And it'll change your guest's mindset, even your family's mindset, and you'll just feel like it's a little warmer and more cozy. So, do you have guests on the way? You're going to probably at some point during the season, so we're gonna go now. I'm gonna, we're gonna traipse through to the other side of my house. Jody's gonna come with you. <laughs> and we're going to go to the guest bedroom. These tips apply whether you have a guest bedroom or if you don't have a guest bedroom. So we're gonna talk about really repurposing any area in your house and some ways to keep things um, working for your guests. Now, on the way, there are a couple questions you keep asking me frequently, so I have to answer them. And one is, when your home is open and transitions from room to room, how do you address the paint color? The best advice I can give you Keep the paint color consistent. You could transition it maybe in a dining room, maybe in your kid's bedroom, and maybe in a powder bath. But all the areas that flow from room to room, keep that wall color the same. Also keep your ceiling color and your trim color the same for the most that you can, and that way it won't feel disconnected. Now the other question I keep getting asked are about my trees and my plants and what are my favorites. I absolutely love I, the fiddle, I'm gonna mess this up. I do it every time. Fiddle, fig, leaf, plant. <laughs> and actually, Costco carries these at times throughout the year. They're, they sell out the moment they hit the store, so if you see it, grab it. My favorite type to pick are the ones that have all these different stalks it, here. It makes it a lot more interesting, but even if you find one just with a single stalk, that's fine too. All right, into the guest bedroom. If you have a dedicated guest bedroom, that's great, but that's not always practical and it doesn't mean you can't make the space just as comfortable for your guests. A couple things to think about is when your guests arrive, it's stressful, and no matter who it is, and to, typically you're rummaging, looking for things to make their stay comfortable. So it's the beginning of October. If you start planning now, it'll make a big difference. Let's say you have a guest bedroom or you don't have a guest bedroom. Having ba um, baskets of pre-planned items that are truly just for use in your guest room make a big difference. Um, towels, how many mix match towels do you have in your house? And sometimes they're stained, sometimes they're ratty. So I like to keep towels that I know are only for the guest bedroom use. And Costco actually has outstanding quality towels, so you could get ones that are a specific color for the guest bedroom, and that's a good way to give a cue as you're doing your laundry that that's for them. But keep these set aside in a basket so as soon as you do laundry, they go right back in. A set of sheets that are literally dedicated just for your guest bedroom make a big difference because then you're not worrying about mixing and matching or figuring it out at the last minute or having to get wrinkles out. Have them in a basket ready to go. A robe is another special touch. At the bottom of this basket, I even have a throw blanket because you want to have flexibility for your guests as they're sleeping. Some are going to sleep really hot, so you don't have to have every layer on your bed, but you do want to allow them the ability, even if you have, because you may have too much air conditioning on, just to layer with blankets. The other thing to think about, and Oliver's here taking interest. Hey, Oliver. Hey, Oliver. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, <laughs> he likes this segment. <laughs> and the other thing is think about all the different things that you need when you're out of town that you forget, or at least <laughs> that I forget, and have them in a basket. Don't bring, if you can at all avoid, bringing home all your treasures from your hotel room and those little half-used bottles because there's nothing nice about that. <laughs> Jody, how many times does that happen to you? Okay. I like I end up going into a guest bedroom and getting a half-used bottle and um, it's usually old, so by the time you put it on your skin, <laughs> it doesn't feel good. So just take a basket that you know is dedicated for your guest bedroom toiletries. That way you can do a quick sniff check <laughs> too, but you're not having to rummage and find your other things that you might be missing. So things, um, have a bottle for shampoo and conditioner and you could just go get the Kirkland big jugs and yeah. refill them before the guests come over. Body wash and the guest bedroom is not a time for bar soap. 
that's gross. <laughs> How many times have you gone into a guest bedroom or ba bathroom and had to share someone someone else's old right, bar of yeah. soap? Don't don't even put your guests through that. Just do a liquid soap when it comes to your guests. Um, a body lotion, one that's not fragranced, is the best way you can go for allergies and things. Face wash, um, Q-tips razors and toothpaste. So things that we all need every single day. There's probably not a day that goes by that you don't use these. And a blow dryer because who has room in their luggage anymore yeah. for a blow dryer? That's a really great idea. Thank you. Where do you usually keep that? Do you keep it in the bathroom then? I keep or? it, since I have a dedicated guest mm -hmm. bedroom and a dedicated guest bathroom, I keep this in that bathroom. Mm -hmm. But if not, you could put it in the, a closet. You could put it in your bathroom, if you have wherever you have the space. Mm -hmm. If you have an extra cabinet in the laundry room, but just make sure it's not one that you're using, that the kids are using, and that you also have it all in one space so you can make sure that, that it's not dated and <laughs> gross when your guests use them. And also it gives you the opportunity just to wipe off any handprints from your last guests. Because you, your guests should be treated almost like they're staying in a hotel. When it comes to the bed, the, whether you have a dedicated bed or you're repurposing one of your kids' beds, or you have a blow-up mattress or even a sofa bed, a good rule of thumb for the pillows is to have two pillows per person because hardly anybody ever sleeps with just one pillow. And this will help ensure your guests get a good night's sleep. And the other thing is pay attention to allergies. So I don't know about you, Jody, but I tend to get, every once in a while get allergies from dust and guest bedrooms can tend to be dusty places. Mm -hmm. So one way to ensure that it doesn't feel allergy ridden in the room is to use Allergy Ease products on the bed. So make sure you have at least one or two options of an allergy free pillow. Same with the comforters because that really matters. You never know what kind of allergies someone has. And then nightstands, keep them so simple. And um, the guest bedrooms are best with plants as opposed to fresh flowers. And that might be killing you because fresh flowers are so nice. Or even leaves or something you gather from your yard or down the street or just somewhere. Um, because a lot of people get allergies to flowers. And so that's not a good spot to put them right on the bedside table. It's a nice gesture, but it's also not the best just because you want to pay attention to their allergies. So lastly, for the guest bedroom, late night munchies and early morning munchies. You never know if you're, oh, sorry, somebody must be here. We'll shut the door, sorry guys. Um, with your um, guests, it's nice to have little snacks for late night snacking or early morning snacking. And um, what I like to do is pay attention to the morning because some of the guests get up um, and get up early in the morning and they want protein or some kind of snack. And so I like to have protein bars and I also like to have little protein packets that they can just mix in their own water without even having to leave the room because it, you never know if your guests are going to be waking up way in advance of you and they don't want to traipse through the house and embarrass you and they might be hungry. So then also nighttime, um, salty and some sweet and I keep some unhealthy and some healthier ones. So just think about nighttime when you get the munchies, what do you like to snack on? And in the morning when you get hungry, what kind of things do you need and put them in the room for your guests. It just makes it easier. Wi-Fi code, that always helps. I can't imagine, or I can't even tell you how many times um, this comes in handy because everyone needs Wi-Fi now. Lastly, <laughs> this one, I've learned the hard way. Pay attention to what is inside your nightstand drawer and don't have your nightstand drawers be your storage area when your guests come over. And when your last guest leaves, check the nightstand before the next guest comes. I've learned that the hard way. There are sometimes left behind items that you don't want your next guest seeing. So in the nightstand, all you need really is a pad of paper and a pen for late night thoughts earplugs because they're in a different environment and so there might be different sounds they're not used to. And then possibly a cell phone charger and tissue. That's pretty much it. That's So if you have these few things thought through now, it's going to make your holiday season guests um, much more enjoyable for you and for them. So um, now we're going to take a few of your questions that have been coming in while we've been filming and then we're going to do some giveaways. We're actually, the mattress that I'm sitting on right now, we're going to be giving that away in just a few minutes. All right, so Jody, yep. fire away. Okay, so <laughs> first question. question I have from Deanna. 
And she said, I would love to get decorating tips from Jennifer on how to hide, divide, and entertain in a 900 square foot on a budget. She said that she has no storage, no shelves, and a very uncomfortable sofa bed. So lots of wall space and ceiling beams with potential. All right. So I'm not sure. Did she say she owns or rents the space? Because my tips will vary ever so slightly. Um, if it's not saying, I'm going to give yeah. ones that go for both. So okay. I've lived in 900 square feet. That's actually spacious when you think about it compared to a lot of different homes and condos. And you have room to have a dedicated living room area that's separate from the bedroom. So have a, a seating area with like a sofa and then two chairs facing the grouping. And if you want to section it off, a screen works really nicely or even plants, just something to give to break up the flow. You could even do long um, cabinets along one side and then you, you can break it up that way. For your bedroom, um, you definitely have room for a bed in 900 square feet, and you can make that space intimate. The sofa bed, possibly transition that into the living room, but get yourself, when you, can, when you have the budget for it, a designated bed, and it doesn't have to be an expensive bed, and then bring, build yourself privacy through the use of bookshelves, um, because you need them for storage, it sounds like, anyway, with baskets and tall trees. And then you can also designate the areas um, with area rugs under each grouping of furniture. I can go on and on without <laughs> seeing the space. <laughs> it's harder for me to be exactly specific. Address your walls, put artwork up, and if you want to drop that ceiling a little bit, a chandelier helps as well if you own the space. And I could go on and on with ways to add the chandelier for a rented space, but we'll do that on another segment because it's a good one. Right. Okay. So, um, Susan said, I got rid of my coffee table, would love something that would be multifunctional instead. Any ideas? Okay. I think a room needs a coffee table no matter what, just to, if purely for aesthetic, if nothing mm -hmm. else, just to bring the room together. But it doesn't have to be a traditional coffee table. Like you can see in my living room, I have two side-by-side -side pieces as opposed to one. Ottomans work really well and they're comfortable to put your feet up on and you can put a coffee table tray The other thing you can do if you need storage is to, there are a lot of Ottomans um, In fact, I've seen these at Costco even mm -hmm. yes. Ottomans and um, That come in cubes or in big rectangles or squares that you they double as storage and So you can open the lid and you can store things inside the other thing you can do is put a gr uh, grouping of like tree stumps and make an unusual pick an uh, like an uneven number and do three or five and do something fun but you definitely want something in the center of your room because it brings all the furniture together and it's one of those things that when the room doesn't feel quite right it could be missing a coffee table okay so Jacqueline said are there any easy ways I can make my place appear bigger and less cluttered declutter <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a simple one. Less is more, even if you have a big space or a small space. Uh, simplify your color palette. Do you have a lot of different colors going on that are fighting each other? Maybe go down to one to one one main color, then with one accent color, and also simplify your patterns. You don't need to have a lot of pattern going on when you have a small space that you want to make look decluttered. It doesn't mean you can't use pattern in a small space, but decluttering was a question. Also, pay attention to how many small objects you have around. Like, do you have way too many end tables? That can look cluttery. Mm -hmm. The other thing is look at how... Are you comfortable, so Oliver? No, <laughs> I think he's settling in. He likes filming. He's so cute. <laughs> oh, he's so silly. So, um, mm -hmm. where was I with that? We So, with your... Um, the room. Another thing to pay attention to is, is your furniture have a lot of legs? If all your furniture has legs, that can start to look cluttery. So bring some pieces that are upholstered to the ground, um, ground the room with an area rug, and then make sure you ribbon your colors throughout the room. That will help it look more unified. And then this is a lot to take in, but and we'll do a segment on just this. But you also want to layer it from the ground up with those colors. And we'll touch on that, I think, in our November segment. Right. So stay tuned. Um, just less is more. And that's an easy question. <laughs> easy answer. So Kimberly said, I love fall and I love Costco. So thanks, Kimberly. Thank you. Um, do you have any suggestions for storage solutions to store extra throws and Yes, you know, there's nothing like, in fact, I'm gonna grab this basket right here. There's nothing like getting a basket, a basket that you love, 
It doesn't have to be loaded with towels and things. Mm -hmm. But it, taking the example of just rolling these towels, roll up throw blankets and put it right, and put them in your living room. So just have a basket with throw blankets that you like. A way to make it look less cluttery and uniform is to have it be all the same color or at least tints and shades of the same color. If you have a basket full of random colored throws, it just doesn't look as good. So just, but let them be part of your decor on purpose and then everyone's more apt to grab them. Personally, I keep my throws in my TV armoire. Oh. <laughs> so they're literally right in that cabinet. It's a dual purpose armoire. That's great. Do you have any suggestions on where you get your baskets or like what color of baskets to go with? The color tone, that's a good mm -hmm. question because the color does matter. Take a cue from the other elements in your room. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you have all dark woods, I wouldn't go with a light seagrass basket. Okay. I'd go with a darker tone basket because you want to ground the other colors that are going on okay. in the room. Um, if you have a room that doesn't have a lot of texture, the texture from a basket can really warm it up. If you have a room that has, is full of texture, you want to contrast it and maybe go with a more smooth basket that doesn't add even extra texture that's not needed. Okay, thanks for the tip. You're welcome. Okay, so Debbie said regarding paints on walls, can a warm tone like a light peanut butter be placed next to a cool tone like a, a Chinook Gray? It's a good question and I get asked that question a lot. This is my personal opinion, the no. <laughs> That's, I don't, I'm all for mixing metals. I'm all for mixing t color tones. I don't like the, um, the typical peanut color walls that we were painting for a while up against the cool tone grays. It just, there's something about it that from a design standpoint just fights it, it a lot. So if you're gonna keep your peanut color wall, I would contrast it with maybe an ivory wall. And if you're gonna keep the shiitake gray wall, then I would contrast it with maybe a charcoal wall or a really light gray wall. That'll just make your room feel better. I wish I had a nicer answer for you than that. <laughs> Well, those are all wonderful tips. Thank you so much, Jennifer. You're welcome. Um, so we got lots of great fan um, call outs. I wanted to call out specifically Jennifer. She said that her kids all wanted their own Jennifer Adams sheets after she got them for her own bed. Oh, so thank So I thought you. that was precious. So that means I wanted to call out that. I love that. Great. Thank you. We have a few giveaways. Yes, we do. So we, we're going to give away. Do we have the list with yes, us? Yes, we sure oh. do. I'm going to let you. Is that, is yes. You, maybe I'm jumping the gun. Nope, that's <laughs> is now the list. time for the giveaways? Yes, perfect okay. timing. <laughs> All right. Phew. <laughs> so we are going to give away, let's see, one, two, three, four sheet sets right now, which I'm so excited about, and a mattress. And as you can tell, the boys are fans of both. Very comfortable so, mattress. <laughs> yes, he loves it. <laughs> So we're going to go and order the sheet sets. So we've got our eternal sheet sets, which you can find on Costco.com if you aren't part of the giveaway. And they're actually in my um, guest basket right here. They're incredibly soft and wrinkle resistant and hotel quality. So very durable. So Haley Dunn, you're one of our winners. Congratulations. Carolyn Johnson Barkmeyer. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Congratulations. Lynette Stapley, you also won one of our sheet sets. And lastly, Tanya Wildland, you also get one of our Eternal Sheet Sets. Congratulations. So now for the grand winner, um, this mattress. <laughs> that we're laying on. <laughs> I don't know that we'll be able to get Jax to move, but this mattress is a, an outstanding. It's our um, Jennifer Adams Eternal Mattress, and you'll see. It's just it's spectacular. Yeah, I was a sitting on it last time. It's so comfortable. It's so comfortable. It's the yes. perfectly layered foam mattress with open cell technology. It's breathable and, and incredible. So, Bronice Jameson, this mattress is yours. You can have a king or a queen or whatever size you want. So, um, congratulations. That wraps it up for this first segment. Thank you for watching. And tune back in at 11 o'clock. And then you want to talk really quick what we're going to be talking about oh, at 11. Just absolutely. <laughs> Give you a reason to tune back in. So, at 11 o'clock, we're going to talk about tabletop decor that is simple with a little bit of an easy breezy California style that you can use anywhere across the world and we are going to show you how to layer things that you can find at your grocery store at the last minute and some of these items you can even find in your local Costco simple tips that you can use no matter what your personal styles and then a fun way to greet your guests if you're entertaining or on Thanksgiving and more giveaways great I'm so excited great we'll see you soon okay thanks Jennifer